Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. We're going to give everyone several minutes to get into the webinar room and then we'll get started. Thank you for joining us today. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's Link Senior webinar. Uh, today we are providing one free NAB, NCAP, and or NCC DP CEU credit. We are excited to say that we have a new webinar FAQ page that will walk you through the requirements for our webinar. And I'm going to post that in the chat box. At the end of the webinar today, I will provide the required post-webinar CEU survey evaluation link in the webinar room chat box, and we'll also send it to each of you by email this afternoon, so please be sure to check your email spam folder in case it lands there. You do need to fill out that CEU survey no later than midnight Eastern time this Thursday, November 5th to be eligible for the credit, and if you're not looking for CEU credit, we still want your feedback, so please go ahead and fill out that short survey as well. CEU certificates will be issued by email on Friday, November 6th this week. I'm now going to hand it over to Charles Deville Morin, CEO and co-founder of Link Senior. Charles. Thank you, Megan. And uh, welcome everybody. Uh, good day to you. I'm, uh, I'm extremely excited for today's webinar. Not only um, I like doing these webinars, obviously, but I'm uh, I'm really excited to. We are very excited, I should say, sorry, to be uh, inviting and welcoming and highlighting the fantastic work of um, people like you, actually, um, leaders in the resident engagement uh, discipline, and both of them have truly been uh, champions of. Um, this basic human right of our residents to live with purpose every day in very different ways given their responsibilities. But I know for a fact that they have been the lighthouses of many, many, many people. And I also want to share that they've guided me in some perspective. Um, Michelle, who works at Kendall at Oberlin, has been a extremely innovative person navigating through COVID-19 and a source of inspiration for me by her different projects and view of things. And uh, Marissa, who works at Prestige, you know, she'll obviously share her story, but um, was an activity, a life enrichment a professional in a community, and believe it or not, was promoted uh, just a few weeks before, a few months, right, before COVID started and has assumed this corporate responsibility, really guiding uh, many of our staff members which, uh, with, with great success. So it's a pleasure for me to invite both of them to today's webinar, which is COVID-19 and resident engagement. So we're going to hear about our champions. And um, with that, I'm going to get started. And um, you know, just to, to give you a little bit of background, um, some of you might know we started these webinars at Link Senior uh, more than two years and a half ago, recognizing the need for education for uh, activity and life enrichment directors. And at Link Senior, there is one thing that drives our passion, which is to advance the quality of life of our residents. And we believe that the more we invest, the more we give tools to the staff, especially the frontline staff the better the quality of life of our residents. So we started this, and obviously um, we, we've, we've been very fortunate to have fantastic speakers um, such as these. The one thing I'd like to note, and I do that every single time because it's useful and people do it, is that any one of you on the line today, um, if you think of anyone that we haven't highlighted or a topic that we should cover that we haven't done so far, please let us know. We love your feedback, uh, good or bad. Um, and if there's something that's missing or something that you want to hear, please let us know about. Um, as, as, as a little bit of background on Link Senior, you know, I started the company 
at, um, in Washington, D.C. a little bit more than 10 years ago, and essentially we provide a resident engagement platform. So we help anything from IEL to assisted living to memory care and nursing home staff engage their residents uh, with purpose. Our work has been highlighted in a clinical study where we were able to correlate engagement with quality of life, clinical, and financial outcomes. And the last thing is we are the people behind the uh, Old People Are Cool campaign that was started about four years ago. I keep on saying four years. It could be five now. Um, and obviously the Activity is Strong initiative back in March when COVID-19 unfolded as a way to simply do three things, to acknowledge and educate and empower anyone who is an activity or life enrichment professional. And um, this is a little bit about me. The one thing I, I want you all to know is that I strongly believe that our industry is activity strong. And with that, you know, kind of share with you a couple of thoughts before we get into the program. The one thing is, is important, and I, I, I say it often, is all of, all of planet Earth, in a way, has been disrupted with COVID-19, all of, you know, most human beings. But I think that's something to be um, noted is that the one industry that is the most disrupted and the work that is likely the most disrupted is the work in senior living and our work, right? The, the way we engage our residents has changed, is changing, and some of these changes, good or bad, are likely here for a good amount of time. So with that and with the idea of embracing change, I think it's important to also understand where we are and how we can do to improve things. So obviously we have both Maurice and Michelle who's gonna, who are both going to share with us stories and lessons. But I'd like to share with you one aspect, which is the work that you do is beyond essential, right? Regardless of where we are in society, this idea of finding purpose, of seeking purpose every day is a basic human right. And activities, life enrichment, is the one leading discipline director staff that does that for the residents. So what you do is beyond essential, and it's an honor to be able to work with people like you. The other thing I'd like to share with you is we've heard loud and clear how stressful the upcoming holidays are. This is a result of our webinar uh, two weeks ago where 97% of you uh, reported the fact that you were unsure or that you were concerned about the coming holidays for the well-being of our residents because the holidays are going to be different. So I'd like to share with you that in partnership with our different partners in Activity Strong, we have decided to do something to help you, which is throughout the month of November and throughout the month of December, we'll, we will be providing free entertainment free performances through our Facebook group for you. And so I, w I want to pause here and I want to thank two people in particular. Well, actually one, uh, which is Michelle, who helped us find these ideas initially. But then I want to thank both Brian with NCAP and Alyssa from NAP, who have helped us put this together. Now, uh, I'd like to pause two seconds, and I also want to wish Alice Tag a very uh, happy birthday today because today is her birthday. But anyway, in the chat, we have the Activity Strong Facebook page and the Activity Strong, the Holiday Strong uh, calendar. So please consider them for your residents to use themselves or you as part of your uh, group programming, whether they are in person or virtual. With that, I want to, uh, again, Thank, uh, thank you for taking the time to be here today. And I'll move our presentation now to uh, Michelle. Michelle, it's all yours. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Charles. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. I'm hoping. Okay, awesome. So I work for Kendall at Oberlin, which is a CCRC, and we are 14 affiliates strong, and, and I'm one from the Ohio affiliate. Uh, you could go to the next slide. And, you know, 
we were looking at what what the heck have I been doing? Because I don't know about the rest of you, but this has just been like going and going and going and trying to figure out where I am. And finally budget season came and my CFO's like, what have you been doing? So I'm like, I put together this and shared it with Charles. And went, what have I been doing? And right before all of this happened, uh, I was in Florida with my daughter and my daughter's boyfriend's family. And he was doing spring break training for, uh, he's a pitcher. And we were visiting my dad in the villages and then COVID hit and we had an emergency meeting. And on the next thing I knew, Angie and I were on a plane flying home. Can you go to the next slide, Charles? So we were, and at the same time, we had just gotten approved by the Ohio Department of Aging, this really amazing dementia program. We were doing it with residents and our staff, and we were doing all this talking about dementia. We were using the, the uh, Canada's uh, video called Cracked, A New Light on Dementia. If you haven't heard of it, please check it out. And it was amazing. And then the whole thing just fell apart. Everything had to stop. The next slide. And um, it became about temperatures and it became about who's coming to work and how do we get people to work and who can work and who can't work. And my daughter there is taking uh, the temperature of our director of clinical services, Chanel Hinton, and Angie was working in our early learning center. And the next thing we know, this is this is our life. The next slide. And Burl Goldman, who was my mentor, started making masks. And this became all of a sudden a huge need because where was the PPE and what are we doing and, and how are we doing it? Uh, next slide. Our salons got, um, were shut down. And even with the distancing, the governor of Ohio was like, nope. And we we're trying to figure out how are you getting people haircuts? As you can see mine in, from the picture, this was cut short in March and here it's, it's grown, right? <laughs> next slide. And then this is um, the next slide, Charles, is my favorite slide because uh, the person I work with, Jara Dell, she's our music therapist and she hates, hates, hates glitter, hates it. And this is why. And we were trying to explain, I saw this on, on um, I think it was Facebook or something and it came up and I'm like, yeah, that's exactly how Corona's working. It's nine of your friends are crafting, one's using glitter. How many people now have glitter, right? And we all know everyone gets glitter. And Charles, next slide. So we were then looking at, we're trying to move into technology and we're all trying to catch up and learn. and this whole Zoom concept and boxes and and we're struggling with it. And then our residents are struggling with these little pictures of families and who's where and how do we run this and how do I participate? And we're, we're all working through all of these, these new challenges, right? Next slide. And a lot of us are like, can you just notify me when you find me? because I'm not really sure where I'm at. And, and we're trying to find our devices because what room did I leave it in? And we're trying to make sure they're cleaned and they're ready for the next person. Next slide. And we're, we're now in a new normal of where we were doing work before, we're, not, we're doing it somewhere else. And a, a lot of some, my meetings were done outside in my backyard. And as you can see, this little squirrel was not too happy with me taking over his back space. And this all became, you know, this all became like new normal. So we, next slide, Charles, the next thing we were running into was this whole thing of rethinking. And I think we've talked a lot about this. Like we went back to our basics, right? As activity people, we're looking at um, coloring books. And my, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. Um, the puzzles, we're looking at audio books, right? Things that we've been doing, but we're trying to also, you know, incorporate some of the newer stuff like the echoes and the shows. And how are we, you know, combining this technology with old school? Um, 
Charles, can you do the next slide for me? So one of the things that we started right away was this concept of my students, right? I had 30 students in on my campus every day or for a week, right? And my Oberlin College students were and my Ursuline College students and my Tri-C and my all these students were here and interacting on a daily basis with our residents. And all of a sudden they were all gone. So one of my students said, hey, can I still run my group, but run it over Zoom? And I'm like, I don't know, can you? Let's try it. And so this is Delaney in the corner and she started running a spelling bee and it worked really well. And we, and all of a sudden we, um, all of a sudden we were, we were able to start like expanding on that concept and offering some more programming. But we didn't have an internal TV channel. So that became a huge struggle for us. Uh, next, Charles. And we really started, we're, we're still working on masks, right? Our sewing clubs, our knitting clubs, they became mask making clubs, right? How do we, how do, we do this? How do we put things together in a, in, and still serve us? Charles, the next slide. And we, I don't know about you, but like we're watching the numbers in Ohio and we did really well in the beginning, right? We had Dr. Amy Acton in charge and we were doing a good job and we were able to open up outside for family visits and we all figured it out. And then now we're, we're figuring out indoor visits in Ohio with all of the, the restrictions that we're trying to meet. Um, next slide. And we're trying to make these spaces pretty. So instead of it being when they come to visit, we made cabana type, type filling of a visitation. And we had little tent villages that popped up for us over the summer. Um, next slide. And that became our new normal, right? Everybody, we're all doing these things. We're all trying new things. We're, we're doing the carts, we're decorating stuff. Uh, fall comes, our students are coming back. And we started to capitalize on this by offering a Spanish class, a student, and I use the federal work study funds. So if you have access to federal work study funds or your local college does, we can use those funds to have our students create YouTube classes for us. Um, if you haven't seen these, talk to Natalie at Link Senior. She can get you hooked up. The yoga and Spanish and food science class, those are the most liked by my residents. Please check them out. They're really pretty amazing. Um, we started offering Zoom discussion classes, right? We started able to, we're doing our indoors and then all of a sudden we're climbing back up in numbers and we're back to this whole um, open, shut them, open, shut them, right? All of a sudden we have privileges one week and then now the next week we have staff that have COVID or residents that have COVID and our privileges are gone. We are eating together one week and the next we're not. And we're in this uncertainty creates um, a, a new normal wave that, we, that we're trying to like get your sea feet, feet and your sea feeling on. Um, next slide. I said to my, my health services administrator, I'm like, he goes, you know, every day I don't know what's going on and we both love Star Trek. So I said to him this meme because this was like, we have to find things to laugh about. And I'm like, okay, Stacy, this is whatever, this is Stacy. And every morning, that's what he feels like he's doing. He's like his whole day and his whole life now is what's my damage report. We can't get ahead of things. We're still trying to be, you know, we're trying to get ahead of it. Um, next slide. We're doing, and I, just like all of you, we're all trying these new things like the, the masks that you can see through. Next slide. We're doing the, um, we're all getting really good at sign up genius, right? We're getting really good at FaceTime. We're getting good at Zooms. 
uh, Amazon Prime. Who knew how much stuff you can get with Amazon Prime? And now that we everybody's getting these echoes in their room, you know, you can make announcements. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with the Amazon, um, the, the Echo Group. And it's just amazing. And we can share music now and we can share our videos. And it's just awesome. And this whole idea of activity strong has been really what's been upholding a lot of us. And I, I go on Facebook all the time and go, okay, who's got this idea or what are you doing? And I'm perusing and, and we're borrowing ideas from each other. It's amazing. Next slide. And when I'm talking about Echo Show, so Charles, yeah, there you go. This is one of my residents and her daughter and the Echo Show for them has been, it's almost been life-saving. It's been life-altering because she can now see her daughter whenever, right? So her, we have all the papers signed. We did all of the risk management. We've signed everything off. And the daughter can now say, can, the daughter can drop in on mom and mom can drop in on the daughter and they can see each other. So she's like, whenever she's getting anxious, she can do that. The next slide. And we have these great families. So this is one of my favorite families, the DeWitts, and I asked their permission. And they've started making these, um, they, they started making our weekly video conference calls really fun. They started wearing like funny glasses. This is blue shirt day, if you can tell. And um, I'm gonna tell, they, this family, is sometimes is the family that lifts me up when I'm when I'm not okay. So the other to give you an example of this, and this is the relationships that we're looking for with our families. I mistakenly canceled Christmas, and I I I was on the sign up genius. I was canceling some things, and I canceled an appointment on Christmas Day, and it sent it to all my families on the on the link. And it said, Michelle canceled Christmas. So I started getting all of these horrible calls about how could you cancel Christmas? This family, this family sent me Grinch memes. They sent me all kinds of funny stuff to make me laugh about my mistake. And I, I, we need that, right? We need those, that support system that says it's okay. And they give us that grace and that mercy and they work with us and and how wonderful that they just made me laugh about this horrible mistake I made, but they were, they just, they took it in stride and oh my gosh, they made so much fun with it. The next one, we finally got our TV channel. Oh, I'm sorry, this is our mask, right? This is our, my new normal. Every day you put on your mask and then, and you're doing something with the T, with the computer. Next slide. And we finally got our TV channel, which has been a lifesaver for us. And we're now doing more programming in, um, so when we can't meet in small groups and we can't do things together, we, we can now reach each other through um, programming on our television. And we got lucky, we have three channels. We didn't get one. So one can be our sign channel, one is our live programming, and one is um, our non-live programming. So how cool is that? It took forever, but when they did it, we did it big, right? <laughs> Next slide. One of my favorite silver linings of all of this is our spiritual services. And I was um, sharing with Charles the other day and, and some of my other friends about this silver lining that I hope doesn't go away. We have, in before COVID, I was lucky if I could get two or three of my nursing home and assisted living residents to their service of preference. There wasn't an, uh, another option other than actually going to the um, church or the temple or to the meeting. Now we are offering almost, I would say over half of my residents are now able to attend the service of their choice on the day of their choice. This is huge. This is this is a great shift for, for my group. 
because they can participate. And we're looking at how, to, and we're talking with our local community to say, how do we not let those go away? Because this is so important. And it's what sometimes keeps some of our residents going that faith in and being able to practice their faith. The next slide, Charles. So we're trying to move forward, right? So here's, we did a, we did a series called, um, I'm an art therapist and we did this series with one of my students in my, in my team of art therapies, art therapists. And we did a um, draw a person in the rain and we're looking for our resiliency and what do we have? And we're trying to move forward and we're still figuring things out, right? And we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna be okay. We're all doing this. We're supporting each other and we're moving forward. And what we're finding is, is some things are taking us a lot longer, right? Our council meeting, it takes five people for me now to run a council meeting. It used to not. Our residents like weekly count. They went just went to bi-weekly every other week council meetings. Um, we're really worried about I don't know about you guys, but I'm trying to look at how do we keep our staff morale going? Because this, you're right, the holidays are coming and we're all worried about it. What an awesome thing that Charles is offering us so that we have some things to put in place, but our staff are tired. And how do we keep that burnout from not going? How do we keep our residence spirit high? Um, you know, can we go on a bus trip? I asked today and my, my the infection control specialist was like, you want to do what? And I'm like, can we go on a bus trip? Can I just put everybody on a bus and can we leave? And then she's like, you want to do what? <laughs> so these are, you know, so we're still running into some regulation issues, but these are things like, can we push those boundaries? Um, Cause we're not allowed to go. Yeah, I see somebody just popped up so you can go on bus trips. We're not allowed to go on bus trips unless it's medically um, necessary. And these are, these are hard things, right? Um, next slide. And I, I think one of the things that, so like when we hit those walls of, yeah, we wanna go do something, but we can't because of a regulation. And then all of a sudden we be, our focus shifts and we come more about the regulation than about what we're doing with our residents. We're at risk there, right? And um, Stacy, the gentleman I was telling you about before, my my um, my licensed nursing home administrator, he finally said to me one day, Michelle, you got to put your eye on the ball. I need you back in the game. You're worried about the referee, and you're not worried about the game. I need you to play the game, and I need you to wor worry about where the ball is, and I need you to worry about our residents, not about the regulations. That's my job. Your job is to go play the game. And that was really an important thing he said to me that day because it helped me reshift my priorities back to where I need to be. So that when these upcoming holidays are coming, we're looking at what gives our residents holiday spirit. What do they want to see? And how do I give that to them, right? I need to capitalize on, on the positives that are happening. And I need to look to all of you and Charles is the one that's really helping us pull these together. How can we as a community, I think there's like 800 people or something on this thing. How many of us, how can we pull our resources together so we're not all recreating the same wheel in different ways? How do we better use students and volunteers? And these things are really important for us moving into our future. And we can do this. We really can, and we can do it if we do it as a community. So Charles, my last slide. So this is something I put out on the entryway and the exit way of our staff. So when they left that day, and I wanted them to leave with this thought that success is the sum of the small efforts repeated day in, and day out so that they understand that we thank everybody for that because sometimes those little small efforts aren't always acknowledged and sometimes we do, we feel like we're in a rut but we're making a difference gang and that's why we're all here 
and um, thank you and keep all your ideas coming on that activity strong Facebook page because I'm looking and everybody else is and you guys are doing great things and it's much appreciated. So thank you. Michelle, thank you so much for your fantastic presentation. Um, I remember you very early on saying, <clears throat> telling me one thing, which is that it's, uh, you know, it's harder to reopen than to close because of all the uncertainty. And um, thank you for your nice comments. You know, um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to visit a, a community since March, and I, I miss it. Um, you know, I. I like to kind of reverse, as you say in French, reverse the um, the thank or the compliment just by saying that it's an honor for me to work with people like you that actually every single day make the decision of showing up at work and doing what you do. So, I, you know, none of us at Link Senior would be doing any of this if we didn't have people like you to feel inspired and, uh, and an accomplishment of this passion. So thank you. Um, I'm going to switch the slide quickly to yours, Marissa, and uh, feel free to let me know. Yeah, here we go. Oh, and we had a few questions. I'll keep them for the end, um, just FYI. Marissa? Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for having me, and thank you to all of you who have taken time out of your day today, your very busy day, to listen to the three of us and what we have to say. Uh, so my name is Marissa Payne. I was introduced to senior living at the young age of two by my parents who raised me for the next 13 years in a board and care home that they operated from their own family home. So my unique upbringing lent itself to a deep understanding of the complexities of the aging process and a passion for acting active aging within the concept of wellness. And you can click the next slide, please, Charles. Advancing from community-based roles as life enrichment assistant for 32 memory care residents, I was then life enrichment director and senior life enrichment director for 64 assisted living and memory care residents. I now serve at Prestige Senior Living as the product specialist in marketing and product development as well as managing the wellness-focused lifestyle product in 42 of our assisted living communities across seven Western states. I also act as advocate and mentor to the 36 life enrichment directors and 18 wellness coaches. I'm also a proud single mother of a precocious preschooler. Uh, we live in California, and it's for him that I aim to set an example of service to others, and I endeavor to model self-care and I hope to instill with him the same respect and appreciation for his elders as I have. Next next slide please Charles. So how COVID-19 unfolded for me. Uh, the unfolding of the global pandemic given that it's global, will have been very similar for each of us. Uh, we will all share a similar timeline and a similar story of unprecedented change and challenges. Um, by the way, who's tired of hearing the word unprecedented? Uh, I will say it four more times in the next 15 minutes. So uh, I'll just briefly highlight a few pivotal moments for me. On December 18th, of last year, I traveled to our corporate headquarters in Vancouver, Washington. And I traveled there to present my proposal for the first formal training and development program for our life enrichment directors to executive leadership. This comprised primarily of one-on-one -on -one and group activity demonstrations, uh, role-playing, activity observations and evaluations, and ongoing dedicated mentoring. It was live, it was in person, it was frequent and regular community visits, which never happened, obviously. On February 15th, I was promoted to product specialist in marketing and product. With this promotion, it was at that point that I was no longer community-based. The role would be approximately 60% home-based and 40% travel to communities to implement that training and development and mentoring program that I had just mentioned. On February 27th, 
I finally completed and issued the life enrichment focus plan for 2020. It outlined a year's worth of original programming uh, that aligned with our Celebrations Lifestyle product. I had been working on drafting it for five months prior to that. On March 6th, all, operation, all operations and regional roles, that included mine, restricted non-essential travel. So in essence, it was from March 6th onwards that I was 100% home-based. On March 12th, the CDC issued industry-wide recommendations of social distancing, group and outing restrictions, and prevented visits from external vendors, performers, presenters, volunteers, et cetera. So it was, at that point, that was the beginning of the end of life enrichment as we knew it at the time. On March 16th, California school districts announced emergency closures. And on March 20th, the governor of California issued a statewide shelter in place order. So for me personally, this meant that my full-time preschooler, he's three by the way, was also now 100% home-based with me. So, life enrichment directors, you had an increased focus on self-directed and one-on-one -on -one activities. You had an increased demand on your time, reduced support from those external sources, restrictions on how to safely use supplies and deliver activities. You had an overwhelming level of stress and anxiety and a loss in confidence. So what did they do? What did you do? For me, I was barred from the communities where I tested new supplies and activities. My formal training and development program for life enrichment directors, null and void. The year's worth of activity programming that I had provided with the intention of guiding the life enrichment directors in their planning didn't meet any of the CDC recommended guidelines and restrictions. So there was an increased demand for my guidance and support. And yet I had less time while I attempted to balance my full-time work with my full-time parenting. So what did I do? Next slide, please, Charles. I assume you're all familiar with the American sitcom Friends. So I was worried that my life enrichment directors felt like Rachel and Chandler bearing the weight of the couch and that they perceived me as Ross shouting pivot over and over again. All the while, I felt like Chandler being crushed between the couch and the handrail. During the day, I tried unsuccessfully at times to entertain my preschooler while responding to requests for support from our life enrichment directors. I did have to cancel 15 plus hours of weekly mentoring calls that I had up to that point. I was up at 5 a.m. working in the early hours before he woke up and I stayed up working in the late hours after he went to bed so that I could attempt to rewrite the programming in that life enrichment focus plan to adhere to CDC guidelines and restrictions. I held workshops for all our life enrichment directors to translate with the CDC guidelines and restrictions, translate the prestige protocols outlined by our chief clinical officer, what those meant for them in practice, in a building, running an activity. And all of it seemed like it was changing daily. And our life enrichment directors were on the receiving end of all of it. You listening in were on the receiving end of all of this. And I felt like I was failing all of them. Then I started to hear our life enrichment directors expressing deeply personal feelings very similar to my own. There's not enough time. I don't have enough help. I'm not doing enough for the residents. I'm not getting enough of my documentation done. I am not enough. It was reasoning through these self-limiting beliefs with the life enrichment directors that helped me overcome my own. And what I learned and I started trying to teach was this. We need to adjust our expectations of how much we can achieve in a day. We can't hold ourselves to the same expectations, but we can maintain our standards. Quality over quantity. And they did, and so did I. And I'm so proud to say that together, we did in fact all pivot. Next slide, please, Charles. The first wave of shelter in place and stay at home orders in response to COVID-19 largely consisted of local governments asking residents of cities and counties to stay in their homes. 
ultimately 42 states issued some sort of guidance on which sectors and which industries they considered essential despite pandemic related closures. According to the US Department of Homeland Security, essential workers are those who conduct a range of operations and services typically essential to continue critical infrastructure operations. And so this begged the question, is life enrichment essential? COVID-19 may have presented unprecedented, there's the second time, challenges with notable cognitive and physical decline industry-wide as a result of social isolation and reduced engagement. However, with it also presented an unprecedented opportunity, an opportunity to demonstrate how our discipline typically misunderstood and undervalued is, as Charles said, beyond essential. We seized that opportunity and adapted our engagement to small group, hallway, one-on-one, -on -one, and self-directed formats. Examples are hallway bingo or jumbo versions of popular games like Connect Four. A noteworthy adaptation has been the mobilization of activities. So what began as refreshments and activity supplies on a rolling service cart door to door became fully developed and deliverable, colorful, themed, seasonal activities that are powerful and uplifting and joyful. Our discipline is now far more respected and deservedly so than it's ever been. Next slide, please, Charles. Our residents grew up in a time of economic turmoil. It was during or after the Great Depression and two world wars. They learned to cope with economic hardships through discipline, self-sacrifice, and key service to others. Our residents are still functional members of society with valuable contributions to offer that they want to offer. So first, we honored our residents' experience by asking them for advice on coping with COVID-19 specifically. Since then, we've expanded this idea to celebrate the wisdom gained from all of their life experiences, asking them to reflect on their values and perspectives to provide advice on any topic asked by the wider community in a public advice column on our Prestige Facebook page called Dear Sarah. This imbues residents with a greater sense of purpose and it empowers them to actively make a difference. Next slide, please, Charles. Ready? I've watched Love that so video at least 200 times and it still makes me tear up. Human touch, it's one of our most fundamental needs. Touch deprivation is a real problem, especially in medically frail elderly, persons living with dementia or Alzheimer's and seniors living at home. A problem that's been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. This leads to feelings of isolation and anxiety, poor trust in caregivers, insecurity, and decreased sensory awareness, which all lead to behavioral responses or expressions. So first, loved ones would visit our residents from the other side of apartment windows. But even this raised questions about safety. Uh, it presented challenges with hearing. And of course, it didn't allow physical contact. Now we have constructions with clear plastic barriers. And we're also currently piloting the use of the Eversound wireless listening system that enhances the ability to hear and focus. Both of these tools combined enabling safe, face-to-face, -face, socially distant visits with even hugs and hand-holding. Human touch increases our emotional well-being and we're now meeting that fundamental need. Next slide, please, Charles. So with group gathering, Resident connection with the wider community is also restricted. 
First, we would have friends or family members surprise residents with poster board size messages from the parking lot. Then in July, we adapted a signature component of our summer life enrichment programming, the classic car show, and held community-wide drive-by car show events. Prestige Senior Living received 44 mentions, one radio and nine TV segments in the media for these events. In this single 30 minute event featured in this video clip, this community had over 30 different vehicles and a motorcycle gang, I use that term loosely, from the local community participate, reminding those 30 socially distanced residents viewing the parade from the curbside that they have not been forgotten that they are missed and that those connections with the wider community remain intact. Next slide, please, Charles. Hey, you know, a local senior care service is holding a virtual singing contest to try and spread some joy and uh, give a creative outlet to its clients and staff. Check out one of the entries. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside oh, that is Miss Georgia singing God to God bless America. She's taking part in the Girl Prestige Sings online contest so hosted by Prestige Senior Living, which has several locations across Portland. Senior residents and staff at the Living Centers are submitting entries. Anybody can vote on their favorites. Just head to prestigecare.com to check out all the videos. You can vote once a week. Prestige will then narrow the competition down weekly based on the number of votes. It's mm -hmm. like a, it's like a prestige version of like American Idol. Yeah, I like it. There you go. Yeah, she was she Ms. was adorable. Georgia, she had some good pipes. That she was did. cute. So it's no secret to any of us listening that there has been a catastrophic depiction of the senior living industry in the media. So we continued to challenge that depiction, offsetting negative press related to COVID-19 by highlighting the newfound essential status of our discipline, the great lengths we've all taken in life enrichment to keep residents engaged and connected and demonstrating how we continue to personally touch lives every day. First, we had hallway sing-alongs or karaoke with residents listening from the entryway of their apartments. But then in August, we held a month-long community-wide virtual singing contest called Prestige Sings, highlighted in that news clip you just watched. This included individual residents, individual staff, and group entries. We averaged 300 votes per round had over 6,000 views on our webpage, over 29,000 views on Vimeo, and 3,000 plus clicks on Facebook. As you know, creative expression in all of its many forms entertains the spirit. And we unified residents and staff in expressing themselves and uplifting the spirits of both each other and all of those many thousands of viewers. Next slide, please, Charles. So looking ahead, what do I anticipate? What are my hopes and plans? Active aging within our concept of wellness will continue. It'll continue with a more person-centered and blended approach to programming between group, one-on-one, -on -one, and self-directed formats by embracing technology to actually enhance our activities and by continuing to elevate the mobilization of our activities. There's concerns about reopening and reclosing, reopening and reclosing, and the effect that this has on the well-being of both the staff and the residents. By taking this blended approach, continuing to do door-to-door -door activities, in addition to group activities when we're allowed to, it'll help ease the transition between opening and closing, opening and closing. It'll mitigate the impact that that has on your residents if you continue with a blended approach rather than stopping all of the amazing innovative techniques that you've developed over these nine months just to go back to what life enrichment was before COVID-19. Maintain that blended approach. 
I recently attended a virtual self-care retreat designed exclusively for women leaders and women business owners. And it was there that I heard the quote, we must never become too busy sawing to take time to sharpen the saw. And that resonated with me. And my first thought was, of course, of our life enrichment directors and our wellness coaches. So I ask you listening in, as you devote yourself every day to serving the wants and needs of your residents within the seven dimensions of wellness, intellectual, physical, social, spiritual, vocational, emotional, and environmental, and you fully understand the impact that this has on their well-being and their quality of life, what are you doing to meet your own wants and needs within those same dimensions of wellness? People think that self-care is all manicures and massages, and it's not. It can be, but there's more. Self-care is you holding space for yourself, doing what replenishes those wants and needs that are part of your wellness. For example, starting your morning with your favorite cup of tea or coffee and actually sitting and finishing it before it gets cold. Taking a 10 minute walk for fresh air outdoors, listening to a podcast on a subject you've been interested in, reading 20 pages of that novel that I know is sitting on your shelf untouched, logging off of social media and putting your phone down for an hour every night. Those are all small acts of self-care. Unprecedented times mean unprecedented escalating levels of stress and anxiety in an already high pressure profession. As such, I'll be integrating regular self-care and mindfulness practices into my initial training and development program, an ongoing mentoring program for our life enrichment directors and wellness coaches, which is now virtual, live, and pre-recorded. And this will strengthen their emotional regulation, their resiliency, and maintain their optimism. Your relationship with yourself directly impacts your relationship with others, with your colleagues, with your staff, and with your residents. In March, I felt from myself and I heard from others, I am not enough. Now, nine months later, programming is more dignified. It's more person-centered. We are having more of an impact. We are more equipped with more knowledge and skills. And we should have more confidence because we, you yourself listening, are more now. You did not passively stand by. You did not merely witness the shift in resident engagement. You, all of us in life enrichment, we defined this transformation and we will continue to do so in the new year. So thank you. Thank you to the marketing and product development team. I have the privilege of being a part of it, Prestige. Thank you to all of our life enrichment directors and our wellness coaches and our Prestige communities. And thank you to all of you life enrichment professionals listening today for everything that you've done these last nine months. Personally, I am so excited for what the future holds for life enrichment. Thank you, Charles. Marissa, this was, uh, this was amazing. There was a comment from Celeste who was amazed by your enthusiasm and energy. And then Glennis said it really well in two words. You rock, Marissa. Thank you. Thank you for sharing so much. Um, I personally love your prestige initiative, which is to show how much there is potential with everyone. Right? Like we, we all know that all people are cool, like all of us. So um, I want to thank both of you for being such inspirations and for the amazing work that you do. You know, Marissa, I think you're you're 200% right when you're saying that we all get to define resume engagement. But I think there's one truth to be told is that this is also done with all of us, but also with leadership from people like both of you. So um, I find that really inspiring. So thank you for uh, this amazing presentation. In the interest of time, I'm going to do a couple of things, which is to show on the screen now the emails of both Marissa and Michelle, as we've had a number of questions and we are just not going to be able to get to them. Uh, Marissa and Michelle have both 
agreed to be resources to you, the audience, should you have any questions on what was presented. And please view them as, you know, questions as simple as what was the brand of this mask? Or, Marissa and Michelle, I hope that's okay if I, t if I say this, as also any question related to inspirational things that we've been talking about. Um, I want to, in, um, in the interest of, in, in, I'm sorry, in the spirit of Activity Strong, I want to mention again the importance of these meetings and the fact that we at Linksino had been very fortunate to work with professionals and leaders like Marissa and Michelle and also partner with organizations like NAP and NCAP. And I'd love to invite all of you to consider some of the future events that we have. As you know, we hold these webinars twice a month. And uh, every quarter, we have these quote-unquote gatherings. So we had one on September 15th, and then the next one is on December 1st, 2020, from 1 actually to 5 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to be sharing the link in the chat in a couple of seconds. But I welcome every one of you to consider joining as we with Activity Strong look to obviously acknowledge the amazing work of activity and life enrichment directors, but we also want to educate and empower you. And with that, there is something deeply important I want to share, which is we also want as much as possible to disrupt. You know, the word that Marissa mentioned at the end, which is that we all get to define our work. This is happening right now. You know, many examples from Michelle's very innovative angles. Marissa is seeing that um, from a corporate leadership standpoint and supporting her lucky staff. Lucky to have you, right, Marissa? Um, but we look to disrupt and really advance the activity and life enrichment discipline. As I shared at the beginning of the presentation, and for the one that might have uh, showed up late, we know that holidays are going to be different for everyone on Earth. And they're also going to be very different for us in senior living, especially you, leaders in activity and life enrichment, and your residents. And so this is why you know, we're very excited to be partnering with NAP and NCAP to be providing you with free uh, entertainment throughout the month of November and December. So we had a couple questions on that. Yes, the program is free. You just need to be part of our Facebook uh, group. And then um, Megan just shared the calendar. I think that right now we have at least, well, we have one program per day and we're continuing to add. With that, I want to leave you with another thought, which is for our December 1st uh, meeting, we're trying something new, right? We like to do new stuff. And uh, that is what's called a tribute. And the reason why we thought it was cool is um, anyone can record a video. So here is to share why we are activity strong. But I wanted to share also with you that you should consider the link uh, just for your community because it's a fantastic way to just record videos. And so, for example, you could get videos of your uh, residents or I've seen communities use it for residents and the family members, right? So I actually saw the daycare of my son uh, use it to collect testimonials because they can't do virtual, like in in-person in visits. So it's a great way to do all sorts of different things, uh, just recording very simple videos. In this perspective, I'd love you, if you don't mind, to consider uh, answering a very simple question why are you activity strong? And uh, I did mine yesterday or the day before, so I don't want to be lonely. Please join me with a video here, and we'll share some of the best one at our December 1st meeting. With that, and talking about future meeting, I'd love you to um, have, I'd like to share with you the upcoming schedule. So this is just for the rest of the year. Um, on November 17th, we are inviting for the third time Vicky de Klerk Rubin from VTI. I have a personal connection with VTI where one, I was trained in the validation method, 
and I'm also on the board of that fantastic organization. We have the winter gathering I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, a couple of minutes ago, and then on Tuesday, December 15th, we are inviting uh, Sarah Carr and Kelly Strandsburg to be talking about our residents pivoting uh, using the system here with programming the same way providers are, right? Are our organization aligned with the way residents are going through COVID? We've uh, almost completed our 2021 schedule until the summer, and we will be sharing that very soon. And with that, I want to close today's webinar by thanking from the bottom of my heart both Marissa and Michelle for your fantastic uh, leadership, and to use uh, Glennis's word, you both rock. Thank you for so much for what you do. And everybody on the line, please consider again what the three of us have repeatedly said today, which is the work that you do is beyond essential. You matter, and we are here to help. Whatever it is through the holidays, through 2021, please consider us as a resource. And again, thank you very much for the work that you do. Bang on time. Actually, oh, sorry. I got to stop the recording. Thanks, Charles. <laughs>